Good morning. It's, is it on? Thank you. Good morning. It is Wednesday, August 5th, in the 18th week of Ordinary Time. This morning, we are memorializing the dedication of the Basilica of St. Mary Major. First raised in the order, at the order of Pope Liberius in the mid-fourth century, the Liberian Basilica was rebuilt by Pope Sextus, Sixtus III shortly after the Consul of Ephesus affirmed Mary's title as Mother of God in 431. Rededicated at that time to the Mother of God, St. Mary Major is the largest church in the world honoring God through Mary. Standing atop one of Rome's seven hills, the Esquiline, it has survived many restorations without losing its character as an early Roman basilica. Its interior remained, retains three naves divided by colonnades in the style of Constantine's era. Fifth century mosaics on its walls testify to its iniquity. St. Mary Major is one of the four Roman basilicas known as patriarchal cathedrals in memory of the first centers of the church. St. John Lateran represents Rome, the Sea of Peter. St. Paul outside the walls, the Sea of Alexandria, allegedly the sea presided over by Mark. St. Peter, the Sea of Constantinople, and St. Mary, the Sea of Antioch, where Mary is supposed to have spent most of her life. One legend, unreported before the year 1000, gives another name to this feast, Our Lady of the Snows. According to that story, a wealthy Roman couple pledged their fortune to the Mother of God. An affirmation she produced a miraculous summer snowfall and told them to build a church on the site. The legend was long celebrated by releasing a shower of white rose petals from the Basilica's dome every August 5th. The entrance antiphon for this morning's Mass will be that of Sunday, found on page 260. The men of Mary will pray a rosary in front of the Blessed Virgin Mary immediately following Mass. All are invited to remain and participate with them. O oh God, come to my assistance. O oh Lord, make haste to help me. You are my rescuer, my help. O oh Lord, do not delay. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We pause at the start of our day, and grateful to be in God's loving and merciful presence. Let's examine our hearts and ask forgiveness for any sin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore, <clears throat> ask best Mary of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pardon the faults of your servants, O Lord, that we who cannot please you by our own deeds may be saved through the intercession of the mother of your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit as one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the tribes of Israel, <clears throat> and they shall be my people, thus says the Lord. The people that escaped the sword have found favor in the desert. As Israel comes forward to be given his rest, the Lord appears to him from afar. With age, O oh love, I have loved you, so I have kept my mercy toward you. Again, I will restore you, and you shall be rebuilt, a virgin Israel. Carrying your festive tambourines, you shall go forth dancing with the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. Those who plant them shall enjoy the fruits <clears throat> yes, a day will come <clears throat> when the watchman will call out on Mount Ephraim. Rise up, let us go to Zion, to the Lord our God. For thus says the Lord, shout with joy for Jacob, exult at the head of the nations. Proclaim your praise and say, the Lord has delivered his people, the remnant of of Israel, the word of the Lord. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Proclaim it on distant isles and say, he who scatters Israel now gathers them together he guards them as a shepherd his flock. The Lord shall ransom Jacob. He shall redeem him from the hand of his conqueror. Shouting, they shall mount the heights of Zion. They shall come streaming to the Lord's blessings. Then the virgin shall make merry and dance and young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console and gladden them after their sorrows. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. His disciples came and asked him, send her away. She keeps calling out after us. Jesus said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
But the woman came and did him homage, saying, Lord, help me. Jesus said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. <clears throat> then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. So the church in its calendar sets aside certain days as feast days to honor different saints, the holy men and women of all time, the martyrs, those who gave their lives for the faith. And then sometimes we set aside a day to honor a certain doctrine or teaching of the church. One of those is coming up, the Feast of the Assumption of Mary on the 15th. A week later is the, the uh, crowning of Mary as Queen of Heaven on the 22nd. Sometimes we celebrate and honor pieces of furniture, the Feast of the Chair of St. Peter, and treat that as sacred. And also, as today, we honor certain buildings, very representative of, um, of something very symbolic, something strong for us. <clears throat> the Feast of Mary Major refers to the Basilica, one of four major papal basilicas that, that exist in Rome. Everyone knows St. Peter's, of course, St. John Lateran, which is actually the, the seat of, of the Pope, the, the home church like the diocesan seat, St. John Lateran. You have St. Paul outside the walls, and then St. Mary Major, whose feast we commemorate on this day. Uh, Mary Major is a, a beautiful church uh, built in Rome. Uh, if anyone's ever driven to Franklin, and you go to um, Our Lady of the Assumption Church in Franklin, it's a, the ceiling of that church is modeled after St. Mary Major. It's a flat ceiling, but heavily decorated, gilded, in a coffered uh, kind of style. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful church. But Mary Major was, was built as a, a church to really give celebration and, and prominence to a doctrine of the church, a teaching that was, was made such during one of the early ecumenical councils of the church, the Council of Ephesus in the early 400s. And it was at that council that they debated and discussed the role of Mary. Um, there was a certain heresy running afoot that said, oh, well, Mary's just the mother of Jesus, the human Jesus. Um, God did the rest. But no, the church teaches that Mary is extolled and honored, and we call her the mother of God. I like the, the Greek term better. The Greek calls her Theotokos, which means the God-bearer, the one who bears godliness into the world. And Mary brought her son Jesus, the Son of God, uh, into the world. And I think it's a beautiful image and title maybe of a church. And it's not just Mary Major. Every church is intended to be a God-bearer carries, it brings God closer to us in our world. St. Mary Magdalene, we could say, this beautiful church is Theotokos, it's a, a God-bearer that brings us Christ, brings us the life of God, our relationship with him. And so I believe we're invited in our prayer to remember how, just as we would honor a building for its purpose and its connection to our Lord, we need to pray for the grace to remember that we too are asked to bear Christ to others in the world. We are too are called Christian, meaning our lives have been yoked and linked to Christ, to Jesus. And we ask the Lord's help today on this feast of uh, the beautiful Basilica of Mary Major in Rome. We ask the Lord to make us Theotokos, to help us to become the bearers of God and God's grace and his love into our world.
Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings made here, and grant that by this offering those who seek your favor may receive in this sacred place the grace of the sacraments and an answer to our prayers. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. For in your benevolence, you are pleased to dwell in this house of prayer in order to perfect us as the temple of your Holy Spirit, supported by the perpetual help of your grace and resplendent with the glory of a life acceptable to you. Year by year, you sanctify the church as the bride of Christ, foreshadowing in these visible earthly buildings so that rejoicing as the mother of countless children she may be given her place in your heavenly glory. And so, together with the angels and all the saints, we praise you, Lord, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. He who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. And do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, and all your people. Lord, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And together with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the risen Lord be with all of you. Lamb of God. Behold Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will not hunger, and whoever believes in me will not thirst.
Let us pray. O God, who chose to foreshadow for us the heavenly Jerusalem through the sign of your church here on earth, grant, we pray, that by our partaking of this sacrament, we may be made the temple of your grace and enter the eternal dwelling place of your glory through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Have a nice day. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God, rebuking me, humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls.